Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerto. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, we call to mind our sins, the obstacles, and our relationship with God and others. We ask for forgiveness. Lord God, you sent your Son to bind up our wounds and to forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came that we might know the fullness of salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came to open the doors of the heavenly kingdom to us, his sons and daughters. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and love they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mam. As he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree, while I fetch a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf which he, which he had prepared, and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree 
while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you in the spring, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? O Lord, who who may may abide abide in your tent? tent? Whoever walks without fault, who does what is just, and speaks the truth from his heart, who does not slander with his tongue. O Lord, Lord, who may may abide in your tent? tent? Who does no wrong to a neighbor? Who casts no slur on a friend? Who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord? O Lord, Lord, who who may may abide in your tent? tent? Who lends no money at interest and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a nun shall never be shaken. O Lord, who may abide in your tent. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, now I rejoice in my sufferings for the sake And in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. For the sake of his body, that is the church, of which I became a minister according to the divine office, which was given to me for you. To make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now made manifest to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man's mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bring it forth with patience. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. Only one thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion, which shall not be taken away from her. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The scriptures this week tell us two stories about hospitality. Hospitality to God. Abraham was sitting outside on a hot day, the first reading tells us. He looks up to find three men standing nearby on the path, apparently satisfying their curiosity about the tent and its occupants. It's not clear that Abraham knew who they were, but we are told that they were God appearing to Abraham in human form. How does Abraham react to God's presence? 
while he flies into action. He bows deeply. He begs them to relax from their journey and to receive comfort, nourishment, and rest. Truly, beautiful hospitality in the eastern part of the world. He then rushes into the tent, issuing commands to his wife, Sarah. They are to prepare a feast like no other, the finest food they could provide. And finally, he then sets this welcoming feast before them. When you think about it, it must have been quite a scene. It certainly was quite a welcome. As dinner progressed, Sarah stood behind the tent flap listening. And these messengers of God made a sudden astonishing statement. Next year, Sarah would bear a son by Abraham. We're told that Sarah actually laughed out loud when she heard this. Because it's absurd. How would her dried up body, nearly 89 years old, give birth to the child her heart ached for? But so it happened. The second story is told in the gospel. We hear Jesus entering the house of his friends, Mary and Martha. And he too is warmly welcomed. As he sits down, Mary arranges herself at his feet and focuses her clear, wide eyes upon him. Martha, we're told, bustles about preparing dinner. You and I would probably cry out, but that's unfair. Well, that's exactly what Martha does when she gets tired and exasperated. And she asks Jesus to make Mary stop lounging around and help out a little. Surprisingly, Jesus says no. He says, Mary has chosen the better part. Isn't this response unjust to Martha, just a little bit hurtful? After all, somebody has to make the meal, or there wouldn't be any food. Maybe Martha should have just said, all right, we're not having any food tonight. We're just going to sit here and stare at you. In truth, Martha's trouble wasn't that she was scrabbling about, but that as she did so, she forgot about Jesus. She was not making him welcome. She was simply constructing a meal. He even tells her that although she's anxious and worried about many things, she was not focused on the one thing that was necessary. So what is that one thing that was necessary and was missing? A focus on Christ, a relationship with Christ, real hospitality, Real welcome means a two-way relationship in which the host and the guest open up to each other, become present to each other in various ways. Hosts do work on the details of preparation, and they work hard to produce this wonderful feast. But they always remember the visitor while they prepare. An excellent host manages somehow to get everything done, everything ready, but also is able to truly listen and converse with the one whom has come. Now that's how we are supposed to act every day. We are to find God in all things, and all the people that we know or help, no matter how busy we might be. We're called to relate to them because God is within them, deep in their souls. We are to touch them, to hear them, prepare meals for them without forgetting them. And that's how we give hospitality to God himself in our lives when he visits us. 
Abraham gave it. Mary gave it. Martha, like you and I do, forgot. But she learned. So can we. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now turn to the Lord with fervent prayer, asking that the Lord's voice will renew in us our love for God and our neighbor. For the leaders of the churches, that they will heed the Lord's voice, calling Christians to unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek solutions to global economic problems, that they will obey the Lord's voice, calling them to promote justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from illness and violence, that they will hear the Lord's voice, calling them to wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us who celebrate the Eucharist this day, that we will respond to the Lord's voice, calling us to mutual love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, that they will rejoice in the Lord's voice, calling them to everlasting life joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with the Pope for the elderly, who represent the roots and memory of a people, may their experience and wisdom help young people to look towards the future with hope and responsibility. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and merciful God, you've given us the fullness of your love in Christ Jesus. May the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and the work of our hands, proclaim the holiness we find in your beloved Son. Help us to live as members of his body, one with you and with each other, and the bond of love, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for you. By the mingling of the salt and wine, we come to share the divinity of Christ and with himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for you. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin.
Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the hearts of your church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant to be poured out for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, with Buti Tlachale, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, which is through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever 
and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin, and safe from all needless anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with the Spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you.